Julia and welcome back to my channel and for today's video I'm going to be talking about books and also American Horror Story. So this is a show that I've been watching for the past few months now that I've really grown to like, um, enjoy, not enjoy, that's not the right word. This show is super interesting to me for so many reasons. And there's also several seasons of this show that all kind of have a general theme to it. We have Murder House, Asylum, Freak Show, Coven, and things like that. So I wanted to talk about the show but also talk about books with you guys. So I'm going to be doing the American Horror Story book tag. I would have made this tag but it already exists. So we're gonna be doing that today and also just talking about some of my thoughts on the show. If you've been here before, you guys know I like my dark stuff. So I, I tried to keep the answers to these questions more thriller recommendations and kind of like books along that line just because the show does have that vibe to it, obviously by the title. This tag was created by As Read by Brooke and this tag was created in 2016, so it's pretty old. So yeah, it covers the first six seasons of American Horror Story. So I'm going to be going over the questions that are associated with those seasons. I've only seen seasons one through four. There's not gonna be any spoilers in this video or anything like that, but I've only seen seasons one through four. So I just finished Freak Show the other day. So I'm going to be starting Hotel pretty soon. So we have Murder House. So Murder House is the first season in American Horror Story and this involves this family moving into a home that is haunted and there's a lot of things happening. They kind of have weird neighbors and there's ghosts, demons, there's so much stuff going on. I really liked Murder House. It was so messed up. All the seasons are so messed up. So in terms of trigger warnings, I'm going to find a resource and link that down below for you guys because there is a lot, like a lot. So if you're triggered by a lot of things, I would recommend proceeding with caution or avoiding the show because it is really, really intense and brutal. But Murder House was one of my favorites. I think I would rank it I think I would rank it not as my least favorite but as my second least favorite or no no I liked it better than Coven okay so it's my second favorite out of the four I've seen I think Murder House is a really strong season I think it's a lot and a lot happens and it's it's a lot but I do think it's a good season and my favorite characters in that were Violet and Tate and what they had going on because they kind of had this romance that was awful horrible would not recommend and stuff like that but but then sometimes viewers would root for them just because like it was I don't know it's a really weird situation not saying that relationship is okay in any way but a lot of you kind of just wanted to root for them even though their relationship was absolutely awful but they were some of my favorite characters in that season and yeah, I'll put a few more of my favorite characters from Murder House up on the screen that were my favorites. The question that is associated with this season is a book series that really sucked you in for the first book. So for this, I'm going to be talking about The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is a book that I used to talk about so, so often in my old videos. So maybe you remember me talking about this if you've been around for a long time. This is basically a young adult thriller crime kind of book. We follow our main character who is 17 years old and she's just really good at reading people. Herself as well as other teenagers come together who all have kind of different abilities and like one of them can tell when you're lying and the, like our main character can read people really well and they come together and the FBI kind of recruits them and they help with crime scenes and it's honestly just a really fun interesting read. They can be a little bit predictable at times but I just remember really really enjoying this book and flying through it and yeah I've been talking about this series in so long I still haven't read the third book so I'm gonna probably do that. It just reminded me that I have to read the third book so yeah but this series was really fun so that's why I chose it for this question. Here we have the second one which is Asylum. So Asylum is probably my favorite out of the four that I've seen. I think it was super interesting. It dealt with a lot of mental health issues and it was overall fantastic in so many ways. My favorites were definitely Sister Jude, Lana Banana. So many were my favorites in this season and it is so messed up in so many ways and it is brutal. There is electric shock therapy. It talks about asylums and how they used to treat people with mental health issues in the past. Some people who were just forced to go there for whatever reason but they weren't really ill and stuff like that. So I'll put more of my favorite characters from Asylum up on the screen, but yeah, this was my, this is my favorite one out of the four that I've seen. But this question is a book with mental health issues that are being discussed. I'm going to be going with a book that is really, a really popular book. Obviously it's a classic, but 
I personally really liked and a lot of people hate it and a lot of people love it. So I feel like you're one of the others. So let me know which one you are down below. But that is The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. So our main character in this book is going through an extremely rough time and that this book is a lot. Like it's really kind of depressing. It's a lot. It drags. We kind of follow our main character as he's just going through a really rough time. He's not the nicest to people and we just see how he develops as a character, how he gets through certain issues and how he tries to cope but sometimes fails. This book I liked because of the depression kind of representation this had and I thought it was really important just to see a book where a kid was just struggling a lot and I know a lot of people didn't like this book and they were like oh it's so like I don't want to read a book about like a character moping for like 200 pages but this was just really realistic and I I just found that this was like I was able to personally really connect with this and kind of his mindset throughout the book and just how he went through a lot of obstacles as well and even though it's a book where it's kind of a bit slow and he's going through a rough time so it can be a little bit difficult to read because not much is happening I just think overall like it's a good classic and I'm really glad that like it exists. People do have issues with The Catcher in the Rye for various reasons but I'd be interested to hear if you like it if you don't like it down in the comments below but yeah I want to mention this one because I haven't talked about this in a really long time but I really enjoyed it when I read it at the time. So future sick Julia popping in just to say that this video is being sponsored by Keen so thank you so much to them for sponsoring this video. Keen is a website where you can get offered guidance insight and advice by spiritual advisors so this includes psychics tarot readers and so much more. This is more of an affordable way to seek these services and it is 24 7 you can either call them on the phone or text them if you're not comfortable with calling. They set up a link for you guys so my link will be on the screen and down below that and this will provide you with 10 minutes for $1.99 from an advisor or a tarot reader or anything like that you want to check out. So this is how the Keen site works. I really loved it and I tried it out and I really enjoyed it. I wasn't too comfortable talking on the phone with anybody so I, I did the chat form and that was really good for me and I got to ask questions and that's how I did my monthly tarot reading this month was with the help of another tarot reader which was really nice. Like you can also pick your advisors so they have ratings and reviews and they're usually people with years and years and years of experience so you could really like look at their profiles and see if there's someone you would want to work with. They also have quizzes to match you up with different advisors or different people depending on if you're looking for guidance in terms of like relationships or finances or anything like that. So yeah, definitely check it out. Thank you so much to Keen for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. I obviously looked into the website before I chose to work with them, but I'm really excited to work with them and that they wanted to work with me. I wanted to talk about this one because of the coven season that's in American Horror Story, which is one of my favorites. So I want I thought this would be a great little segment to put in here and give you guys an opportunity to try out any of this stuff if you've ever been curious about it. Now back to the video. Next is Coven. So this is the first, I watched these, se these seasons out of order. So this was the first one that I watched because I wanted to watch Coven. I really liked Coven. It was a fun, more of the fun comedic-ish kind of seasons while Murder House and Asylum were more serious. I feel like, I felt like Coven and Freak Show were also very serious but kind of had this silly component, like this little comedic moment to it. I don't know. It has some like satire stuff in there. So that's what I kind of mean when I say that. But Coven, I have so many favorite characters from, so I'll put them up on the screen. There's a lot of similarities. Like there's certain actresses that I like throughout the series so much and certain actors that are my favorites from each season for like their characters. The way the actors portray them, I think is so well done. And there's a lot of really great actresses and actors in this show. Basically the prompt is to talk about a book that deals with witchcraft or has witches in it. So I'm gonna be talking about The Wicked Deep by Shanae Earnshaw. I want to get a good mix in here of yeah, like young adult and adult and just kind of mess around with that a little bit. So this story follows a town where three witches were drowned in the lake and each summer these witches come back and take one person with them. So each year someone goes missing. We follow our main character Penny who has lived in this town for a while, knows what happened, everyone kind of just knows that it's going to happen and we follow Penny as this new boy comes into town and she's kind of telling him everything about how the town works and all of the issues within it and things like that and there's a bit of a romance in there as well but there's it's also super eerie and creepy and I just really remember liking this book because of the tone of it. I did think it was a bit predictable so that's something to note like I did see the ending 
coming and stuff like that that this author writes is just really well done and really atmospheric so if you're looking for something like that i would recommend this this one is the one i just finished i did not like the ending of freak show at all i watched this this entire season with my boyfriend so i kind of watched some of the episodes space like space out a bit but freak show was not my favorite there were some things i liked about it and yeah they can mm, i can't spoil you i'm not gonna spoil it but so so my, I knew what was going to happen about halfway through the season. I'm like, I know how this season's going to end. That's how it ended. And the ending also was bad because something else happened and it wasn't good. Like they started out this season and knew what they were doing and how they were building the characters and introducing them to us. And then at the end, they just didn't know how to end it and just like dipped. So this season wasn't my favorite, but it wasn't bad. There were things that I did like about this season so i'm still excited to go on to a hotel and things like that the prompt for this one is to rec like talk about a book that there is a character that's kind of like an outcast so i want to talk about a manga so i'm going to be talking about the girl from the other side the world there is the outside and the inside and the outside kind of where these outcasts live they're these kind of beasts and they're like this guy that's on the cover and the inside is where all the humans live safely and peacefully when a human from the inside and a beast from the outside meet they kind of form this bond together and they have this unlikely friendship slash relationship and it's more like a father-daughter thing to me so that's what I've really been enjoying about this and the art style in this is absolutely stunning I absolutely love this art style and everything about it so yeah I read the first volume for a manga series video and I really enjoyed this this was my favorite in that video so I would recommend this if you're looking for a good manga especially that's a little bit on the eerie or creepy side of things the next two seasons I have not seen yet the next one is hotel this is a book where a setting plays a critical role in the story so I really liked that this this prompt so basically i'm going to be talking about escaping from houdini by carrie maniscalco this is the third book in the stalking jack the ripper series the fourth one is coming out soon called capturing the devil that i'm super excited about this is about our main characters solving crimes and it takes place on a boat and there's tarot readings and there's aspects with tarot cards and magic and it's just overall a great read if you do not know stalking jack the ripper is the first book and that one takes place in london in the 1800s. We follow our main character, Audrey, who is into forensics and she works with dead bodies. And we follow her as she is trying to solve crimes and how men look down on her in a lot of ways just because she's female and that she works in such a brutal career. And we follow her as she kind of tries to solve these crimes and the people she meets along the way. So this book continues her journey and I don't want to say too much because of spoilers, but this one takes place on a boat and I thought that was absolutely fantastic. And yeah, I loved this one so much. The first book was okay. Stalking Jack the Ripper, like it was okay, in my opinion. And, but the second and the third book are absolutely fantastic. So I got a chapter sampler for the fourth book. So I'm excited to read that. And then for the, the fourth one to release. The last one here is Renoke. Is that how you say it? I really don't know. I've been like staring at this and trying to find pr pronunciations for it. I'm not sure, <laughs> but this one is basically a book with a unique writing style. So I decided to go with a book that I've been talking about a little more recently, but that is Dear Wife by Kimberly Bell. I've been talking about this one a lot recently in different wrap ups and stuff because I read it recently and in vlogs, but this one is a thriller told in multiple perspectives. So we follow this one girl who is on the run from her abusive husband. We follow a man whose wife has gone missing and we follow the detective that's on the case and we go back and forth. And that's just something I really loved about the story was the writing and how well it was done and how it was incorporated. So I love multiple perspectives when they're done well. So this was absolutely lovely to see a multiple perspective story done well. And then when they kind of like intertwine-ish, usually that's what multiple point of view books do. They usually intertwine at the end. So that is something that I really enjoyed about this book. So there you guys have it. That is me talking about American Horror Story as well as doing the American Horror Story book tag and just talking about the show and books in general. I thought it'd be a fun video. So let me know if you watch the show, if you are going to. I'm going to have my playlist down below full of American and horror story edits that I've found online. I have a playlist for it. I've also done journaling pages for this. I've done aesthetic boards on my Twitter for this show. So if you want to see any of that, you can follow me on there. If I were to rank the seasons, if you're wondering at this point, I would rank them Asylum as my favorite. Then Murder House, Murder House or Coven are like, I'm so iffy between second or third. And then lastly, Freak Show. So let me know what seasons you've seen and how you would rank them down below. I'm going to be tagging Jake, Jessica and Sabrina. 
because I, I know those three people watch the show. So I'll have their links down below. So thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and comment down below. I would love to hear from you. And as always, you can follow me on any of my social medias that are linked in the description box, including my Patreon, if you want to support me on another platform. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. And again, I will see you super soon. Bye. Also, one thing, make sure to check out my Keen link down below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.